Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. The body I've lost, the comrades I've lost, won't stop hurting. It's like they're all still there. You feel it too, don't you? And I'm not taking down that tweet or acknowledging that my tweet violated the Twitter rules. Up yours, woke moralist! We'll see who cancels who Hello everyone, once again, from the capitalist dystopia of the United Kingdom. Now, back when I was in the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, I made a video about Jordan Peterson, like, basically losing his mind. Because I noticed in, like, a two-hour span on Twitter, he must have tweeted over, like, a hundred times, maybe more. And he was, like, retweeting himself, quote-tweeting himself. It was absolutely unhinged behavior what he was doing. Now, I thought, like, three and a bit months later, he might have calmed down. I go on his Twitter today. He's tweeting, like, every couple minutes still. This guy tweets non-stop, like, 24-7. This guy is the biggest social media addict I have ever seen in my life. I don't even know how he ever gets any work done. He records podcasts and stuff, but he seems to be tweeting even during them. So today what I wanted to do really was just look more into what he's doing because seemingly tweeting like a hundred times in a two hour span is not the height of his toxic behavior online. Now he's posting pictures of the Joker. He's like writing his tweets like they're like haikus. He's become even more like self radicalized in this echo chamber, which is Elon Musk Twitter. And I asked the question in my video about Elon Musk becoming like far right over the last couple years. Basically, has this echo chamber actually radicalized Elon Musk? Like an echo chamber of his own design has made him this way. And I think Jordan Peterson is like a similar case because as I've always said since 2018, because I'm so, so principled, even as a young man, I've said Jordan Peterson was trash, but even I can admit his behavior recently is just like so different to how he used to be. Kind of the substance is there. It's just more extreme. Like he's completely gone off the deep end. Like every single thing conservatives are against now, he is also against without any critical thought. He hates all efforts to try and stop climate change. He of course hates the LGBT community. And now he seemingly hates women so much, even his own daughter is calling him out on Twitter for reposting loads of anti-women tweets. So we're gonna look at all of this today and just look at how some of his like old fans are reacting to his further descent into madness. And in essence, it's fitting. He is posting the Joker all the time because he's basically becoming the Joker. So all of that coming up for you today, please like the video in the comments. Let me know what you think is the most crazy tweet he's written recently. You could probably just go today and find something insane. I guess maybe wanting to see Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk fight naked in olive oil was weird. But a lot of his poems and tweets about the Joker are also weird. But I also want to plug something today. So basically there is like this debate live stream tomorrow featuring a lot of prominent leftist creators. You have FD Signifier, you have Jesse Gender. Kira Chats and a few others are basically trying to raise money for Ra Il, who did a lot of research into Gamergate and trying to help them escape North Carolina because of like the transphobic climate. So you can find the live stream tomorrow for my Americans who might be watching this on Friday, for Europeans watching this on Saturday. It's going to be on Kira Chats Twitch channel or Bellamy J's Twitch channel, and I'll also post the GoFundMe in my description as well so you can go check all of that stuff out and just for usual plugs for me go check out my twitter instagram patreon all that good stuff so now let's get into jordan peterson's joker arc so if we go on his twitter account still pretty similar he was complaining about how he was gaining no followers i might chop that down to just tweeting incessantly all the time being annoying for everyone even people who support your political views. But of course, Jordan Peterson has become no better than a right-wing political pundit these days. If you go on his YouTube channel, he's actually just interviewing people like Mike Pence, James Lindsay, all these like far-right types. He firmly is in the American far-right and has lost like any credibility as some sort of, I don't know, 
conservative intellectual, people might call him. So he's been doing this weird thing recently where he just tweets one word and then changes to the next line. So um, someone tweeted, experts have stated that $1 trillion per year until 2030 is needed to respond to the climate crisis. But where will this money come from? So someone talking about the globalist push for new taxes to fund the climate agenda. So he tweets, net zero means zero for you peasants. Really, truly. Okay, that is obviously really bizarre, but it's just so crazy to me that he's trying to frame increased taxes to help against climate change, meaning the rich just want to rob the poor. Because what happens if we just allow the earth to rot? If we allow capitalists just to destroy the planet, who's going to suffer the most? It's, it's going to be us. It's going to be normal people. It's going to be really poor people in the poorest countries in the world first, right? So a lot of money being needed to change the course of the Earth's trajectory to save a lot of people, including the poorest, is not like net zero, meaning zero money for us peasants. And a lot of people like Elon Musk, Jordan Peterson, they rail against the supposed elites or the leftist elites while being like, firmly in bed with the global elite themselves so let's keep looking at this so um Sadiq Khan the mayor of London saying today with King Charles we launched the climate clock a visual reminder of the urgency of the climate crisis the climate emergency poses a threat not only to the future of our city but to the future of our world and is why it must remain a key priority like doesn't seem too controversial just someone tweeting about climate change with you know one of the richest men in England the king who probably doesn't want to change the capitalist system enough to avert climate change, but, you know, he is passionate about this stuff in his own way. Jordan Peterson, leave us alone. Like, 10k likes, what has this got to do with Jordan Peterson? I guess he's Canadian, so it's the same king, but tackling climate change, apparently, you know, there's visual evidence of it everywhere. Like, every single month, there's a massive news story. If you want to do anything about that, Leave us alone, Jordan Peterson says. Leave us alone to our rotting earth while corporations just destroy the planet. Leave us alone, Sadiq Khan and King Charles. Tweeting about vaccines, of course. How else do you terrify people into providing useless vaccines to children and why? Money. And again, it shows the critical thinking is just gone. I don't think Jordan Peterson in 2018 is like an anti-vaxxer who is totally against every measure to try and stop climate change. But now he's just a carbon copy conservative, literally the worst of them as well. Like he is like a far right conservative in the mold of like populists like DeSantis and Trump and all these culture war warriors. He is no different. He is not showing any critical thinking skills. He is not showing any merit as even a right wing intellectual. He's just a boring ass conservative culture warrior like a million people with verified accounts now on Twitter. So James Lindsay has blocked me on Twitter probably for owning him, but... I can't actually see what the original tweet was, but here is Jordan Peterson tweeting the Joker for the first time recently, but don't worry, he's going to keep doing this. He retweets another far-right account, the red-headed libertarian, who Elon Musk simps for as well, posting a picture from James Lindsay's Instagram. Me knowing they're going to blame the upcoming food shortages on climate change and use it to scare everyone and manufacture a new crisis. So this is like the conservative conspiracy worldview, right? Climate change is not going to cause food shortages, apparently. According to these people, no chance. It's just the elites trying to scare you. It's just the elites trying to scare you and manufacture a new crisis so they can implement their globalist agenda or something like that. It's just so divorced from reality. It's depressing that so many people feel like this. And these are not the thought leaders of conservatives. These are the people they look up to saying that, Yes, the very real threat of climate change, increase in temperatures, so there's going to be massive crop failures around the world and massive threats to the supply chain is probably going to cause like a lot of hunger. That's just not true, apparently. It's not true based on vibes, I guess. It's not true based on, I believe there is a leftist elite. While I grift for the actual elite to make as much money as possible. So retweeting people on the right in Britain who say Britain to be left without emergency power back up this winter. This madness of net zero means ordinary folks face energy rationing. Let grandma freeze in the dark net zero. Um, a fun thing for people to do, type in Jordan Peterson's grandma into Google and see what comes up. But here he is posting the Joker in regards to like puberty blockers. Like he keeps doing this. He keeps posting the Joker. I guess he's saying it's making him into the Joker. Everything to do with trans rights. People are too comfortable mocking vegans. 
don't mock vegans. They don't have the stamina to recover. Why is he tweeting like this? I don't really understand. Is it some way he thinks it's going to boost him in the algorithm? And as someone who has tried to be a bit more vegan with my diet recently, in that I pretty much eat vegan apart from like maybe a tiny bit of meat and fish with dinner these days, uh, and I'm feeling a lot better for it, I've been harassed so badly by leftist vegans. So I can understand how often insufferable vegans can be when they decide you're their enemy and stuff. But at the same time, Jordan Peterson, are you really going to mock vegans when you ate like a red meat only diet for months that basically nearly killed you? It's clearly you're the idiot there, not vegans. And as someone who is eating like a largely vegan diet at the moment, I'm working out fine. Last week, I probably did the most exercise I've done um, in a week, in a long, long time. Got back into running for the first time because my knees have recovered and stuff like that. I felt really good on a vegan diet. I'm probably going to largely stick with cutting out meat for the most meals and cutting out, you know, dairy and stuff. So Jordan Peterson, I think you should try it. I think you actually might feel better. And there's plenty of meat alternatives these days too. But yes, Jordan Peterson, I wouldn't be mocking vegans when you were eating like a carnivore diet, which made you really, really sick. He also just likes posting really bizarre pictures. This one he seems to like, like a devil driving a car. He has another one of, is this Nosferatu or Dracula? I don't even know what this is, but he keeps posting these two a lot. I do love that people used to think that Jordan Peterson didn't hate women. So a Babylon B satire hilarious funny man article writes, Female comic goes a record six seconds before mentioning her vagina. Peterson writes, that's for sure. What the hell is it with female comedians? Disgusting and funny are not synonymous. So basically agreeing with the title of the article that female comedians aren't funny. Do I even need to explain is like really misogynistic that you're just saying that women aren't funny? Because only men can be funny. Only this article could be funny. The Babylon Bee is hilarious, isn't it? If there's anything that shows that men aren't funny, especially conservative men, it is the Babylon Bee. So with Olivia Chow winning her election, he tweets, Oh good, the woman who taught Jagmeet Singh to lead now runs Toronto, posting this Joker picture. Again, I really, really don't understand this. Most people probably saw this. An article by Spike, the term cis is an invention of trans activists. It is being used to shut down dissent, compel adherence to gender ideology. The sooner we leave it behind, the better. Jordan Peterson says, call me cis to my face and see what happens. What will happen, Jordan Peterson? You're going to knock someone out for calling you cis? This whole crazy turn on the word cisgender on Twitter is so like symptomatic of these people just being radicalized by their transphobia. Like It's just so crazy to see in real time something that was like a non-issue even like four years ago when Jordan Peterson was becoming like really famous and stuff, or five years ago at this point, these people are saying it's a slur. It's absolutely just insane. It's also very depressing as well. So more stuff against climate change. Toronto Star reporting, Canada will eliminate extreme heat deaths. Trudeau government says that it sets new goals to fight climate change. He writes, because the number one problem in Canada is extreme heat deaths. The Joker meme again. It's just so stupid as well, right? Because we've seen all these crazy wildfires in Canada. So yeah, stopping extreme heat deaths and as we get loads more like really hot temperatures in countries that might have been cooler before, that's a good thing. Why would you not support that? Why would you not support stopping people dying from extreme heat? But Jordan Peterson here, well, if that's not the number one problem, I got to become the Joker. I'm getting so radicalized by Trudeau. He just absolutely hates Trudeau in a really, really irrational way. So I remember when Jordan Peterson made his claim to fame by saying he wouldn't say a student's preferred pronouns, citing it as a free speech issue. So, so another far-right account, Andy No, non-binary identifying students in New Jersey skyrockets 4,000% since 2019, providing further evidence of the social contagion aspect of gender ideology, particular through propaganda pushed on minors and social media. Jordan Peterson writes, the liars are enabling the butchers. So I don't even understand what this has got to do with butchers and stuff. Like he's talking about non-binary people, people who just identify as non-binary. There's nothing in that article about people getting surgery to change like parts of their body or people going on hormones and stuff like that. It's literally people identifying as non-binary. And why it might have increased since 2019 
it's because there's more knowledge about it. Not that people are being indoctrinated in woke ideology. Suddenly, oh no, I'm non-binary because I saw a TikTok about it. It's literally like, yeah, people will start normalizing something which should be normalized in a community. You feel more comfortable in your own skin to come out as non-binary. Pretty simple. This guy's just gone completely off the deep end. So even just like a normal tweet from the Democrats, eight years ago, the US Supreme Court made marriage equality the law of the land. Love is love. Drawn Peterson quote tweets, tell it to the sadistic psychopaths when they come for you. What does this even mean? I don't understand. Can someone explain this to me? Tell it to the sadistic psychopaths when they come to you that love is love. I really don't understand this. And also like, you're getting a sense of the variety of things he just retweets all the time. He must be just sitting on his phone or his computer for hours at a time, just scrolling on the For You page, reacting to every single thing. Like genuinely, it just feels like he reacts to anything he sees. Not even taking any time to be like, oh, do I have to have an opinion on this? Just like, oh, Democrats tweeted about gay marriage. I have to say something to my followers. Again, this guy is really not well, in my opinion. Posting more Joker memes. And then, of course, yeah, he keeps posting the Joker over and over again. He really loves these Joker pictures. So we are ending with the best ones. So let's take a look at this. So um, so H. Pearl Davis is someone um, who says women don't deserve the right to vote and stuff. And they shouldn't vote at all. And she just posted a video onto Twitter and Jordan Peterson quote tweets it saying who would keep the decorative pillow manufacturers in business after she makes a video saying outside of reproduction, society would function fine without women. Michaela, his daughter saying, your business would definitely take a hit, dad. This is a resentful woman who hates other women, tells them that they're useless after 35 and continues to propagate red pill lies. Just because the left is crazy doesn't mean people like this aren't. So yeah, that is the rabbit hole that Jordan Peterson has fallen down. He is being radicalized that he just sees anything and he agrees with it. Like if it's misogynistic, if it's racist, if it's transphobic, if it's homophobic, he sees it and he likes it. So much so even his own daughter, of course, probably doesn't agree with someone who says women shouldn't vote and have no use to society apart from having kids, right? So that is how radicalized he's getting that his own daughter who's been on board with basically every single thing he's done is now calling him out publicly on Twitter, and I think he might have deleted it because I couldn't find it today. Also, quote tweeting a National Post article about Elon Musk challenging Mark Zuckerberg to a cage fight. He writes naked or clothed, and then hours later writes, and there should definitely be oil involved. Like, what the hell is this guy thinking about for like four hours? So people watching this video, if you want a fun game, I took basically all these screenshots from today. If you want a game, go on his Twitter account and see how far you have to scroll before you find one of the tweets I showed you. I think the first tweet I showed you was the most recent. So go on Twitter and see how long it takes you to find that tweet. Because I guarantee he probably would have tweeted a hundred times since then. He is absolutely unhinged. It could be a result, you know, of that dangerous medically induced coma he went into to try and kick his addiction. Could be a whole host of things. I mean, the one thing I will say is that sometimes when people suffer an addiction, you don't even recognize their personalities anymore. And it is a result of like the addiction and stuff like that. But in this case, Jordan Peterson is the same person. He's just the more extreme version. Like nothing he's saying right now is like really that different from stuff he's always said. He's just more unhinged about it and far more like reactionary. So I thought I'd go on the subreddit and see how Jordan Peterson fans are reacting to how he acts lately. I will say one thing, compared to like a year ago, it seems like the conservatives have firmly taken over the subreddit because there used to be like quite a lot of debate over the direction Jordan Peterson was going. Like even a lot of them didn't like him signing up with the Daily Wire. But now if you go on the subreddit, it seems like they all support this. So it's probably just loads of new conservative fans in the subreddit rather than his old fans. But you still see some of them. Someone posting, why do we care so much about trans people? I got into Jordan Peterson by reading his 12 Rules for Life and there's absolutely nothing that great book to go after trans people. Now, here's the truly honest take. I don't know any trans people. I don't care about them. I have to go out my way to meet them. In my daily life, it isn't really an issue for me to accept that there is people who choose to live life in a different way than me. I came to his sub looking for tips for self-help, improvement, and maybe some new rules for life, but this place is all about pride and trans and so many things outside my world, and I really don't care about it. But like I said, there's a disconnect between like these old fans who like his books and then the subreddit just turning into like some conservative hellhole. So they posted Jordan Peterson retweeting H. Pearl Davis, and a lot of the comments were, you know, saying 
he needs to get off Twitter. So JP is completely fine outside of Twitter. I don't understand why he is like this on Twitter. I have heard some hearsay that he has someone else running his Twitter. He definitely does not have someone else running his Twitter. Or that is the most unhinged intern in the history of, you know, paying for people to run your social media accounts. He needs to get off Twitter. Agreed. I like Dr. Peterson, but his Twitter habit is really bad. Dr. Sam Harris left Twitter because Dr. Harris felt it was turning him into a troll. And I think Peterson should follow Harris's lead in this one. Someone else saying, I suspect his chemical dependency on benzos has a much more severe effect on his mental health than is commonly acknowledged, which, you know, I would agree with maybe as well. But then you have people recently who are just like quite shocked at what he's like on Twitter. So what happened to JP? I apologize if this has been asked before. In fact, I'm sure it has. Anyways, I used to be a huge fan of Jordan Peterson's lectures, writings. Like many, he has a positive impact on my life. My life got better and I kind of forgot about him for a while. Out of curiosity in recent weeks, I've gone on YouTube and Twitter to see what he's been up to. What the hell happened? He just comes across as a flat out asshole. Not even an intelligent one, but rather a mean-spirited, right-wing, unthoughtful jerk. Is it ego run amok? Is it a result of the benzo withdrawal thing? Is he just a sellout? I think he's all of them. It's just weird to watch a man I once respected so much turn into what I consider to be a monster. It appears to be a genuine mental breakdown. Seriously, I'm not brainwashed and I'm not even talking about his belief or politics, most of which I agree with. I used to fervently defend him. It just seems to me he went from a great thinker to a brash, climate change denying, power hungry asshole. Two years ago, I would rate JP as top five people I'd like to have dinner with. Now I don't even think I want to be around him. I'd love to hear any thoughts. Someone else saying you're not alone before the turn in temperament. I'd managed to get my democratic socialist ex-girlfriend to watch one of his talks with me. Then she went to look at his Twitter page. Well, so much for that. OP saying you're describing my exact experience. It was actually my girlfriend who showed me his Twitter. It was shocking and I felt embarrassed for having supported and praised him so much. The thought of being so naive about what Jordan Peterson really represents to show them to um, your democratic socialist girlfriend or just your girlfriend in general, right? is just so funny to me. It's funny to me someone could just, you know, pick up his self-help book, read it and be like, oh, I like this guy. Let's watch his lecture on self-help. And then the girlfriend just like opens his Twitter to find like, a complete timeline of just everything terrible. Transphobia, homophobia, misogyny, anti-vax conspiracies. Would I call them pro-climate change tweets? Because he seems to not want to do anything about it. So yeah, his Twitter persona is of course night and day with his books. But if you're someone like me, who's been following his whole social media career, nothing he's really saying is out of bounds from what he used to be like. The only difference is... He used to be more rational. He used to be more civil. He didn't used to be as extreme. But his Twitter presence is just unhinged. Maybe he's replaced some sort of addiction with the Twitter dopamine of constant, you know, likes, constant retweets, constant people telling you you're great, or even negative stuff. Even people like me who might write the odd tweet to him, saying something to him. Maybe he likes that as well because he's getting engagement. People are talking to him. And maybe if he is recovering from addiction and stuff like that, it's a good crutch or something because you do get dopamine hit. And we spoke in previous videos how social media addiction probably should be treated as like a real addiction because it is something that's becoming increasingly common among people who just need it for this validation or even just like a chemical reward in their brain and stuff. But it seems like on the subreddit, more and more people just like Jordan Peterson for being a cultural warrior. And it is actually one of the easiest grifts ever but jordan peterson has that credibility of like being seen as an intellectual but it's pretty clear to anyone reading that there's nothing intellectual about him there's no critical thinking skills he's just absolutely unhinged at this point like i disagree with the notion that he has had a genuine mental breakdown but it does feel like mentally he is really not in a good place and he's been deteriorating over the last like five years or so where he's, you know, literally posting about becoming the Joker and stuff. And I just don't know how anyone can take him seriously. And I'm just glad that the mask has come off where you can't go around purporting to be a reasonable person saying you've like read Jordan Peterson and think he's good or you like his lectures and stuff. Because thankfully he's shown himself to the world where in the past people like me would say 
bad guy, hates women. This is like in 2018. And I would get absolutely dogpiled on YouTube saying I was wrong and all these terrible things. I used to get called when I used to get dogpiled as a smaller creator. But now, thankfully, people like me and loads of people have called him out for years have been proven right. Like the mask come off, terrible guy. But I do think Twitter has radicalized him even further where he's just become completely untethered to reality, it seems like. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.